The World Heritage Area of Tongariro National Park certainly has a lot going on. Internationally significant natural and cultural values, not to mention the constant threat of a laha from the active volcano of Mount Ruapehu. But what is a laha? To open up you in the meanwhile, I still pursue to inject you with my horriest intelligence. So intelligent, make way for the native of all back on your hill. I stopped the sun up just like my legendary prophet got like Lahar is a volcanic mud flow, and it's an Indonesian word. And the situation we've got behind us on Rua Pehu is we have a crater lake up there, as you know, and the vent of the volcano is under the lake. In 95, 96, when we had the eruptions, a lot of debris or volcanic material was blown out of the lake and landed over the natural outlet from the lake, which flows down the Whangaihu River that you see coming down behind us here. That built up for 11 years until the lake refilled, finally the material, uh, the dam eroded, and then a lahar occurred. This massive volume of about 1.3 million cubic metres of water started to flow down through the gorges of the Whangaihu, down off the mountain, and literally it cleaned up and picked up and scoured out that whole gorge on the way down, rocks, boulders, ash, literally anything that was loose became part of this concrete moving, concrete slurry down the mountain. Travelling probably 20, 30 kilometres an hour, pretty fast, pretty awesome, very noisy, until it reached the lower area here, this Rangapo Desert, the area behind us up there on the slo lower slopes of the mountain and then it started depositing a lot of that material as it made its way on down the Whangaihu, down towards the sea. And it's come down that river for thousands of years. In fact, where we're standing right now, this area and all this area between here and Wairu across the desert has been built up over thousands of years by countless hundreds, maybe thousands of lahar that have done just that. If you'd been here on the 18th of March, one would have been in the middle of the lahar because we're standing in the riverbed. But the other thing is, looking up behind us there, there's a very sharp bend in the river. The lahar came over the bank, took away the toilets. The toilets came down here over this riverbed, never to be seen again. And the same thing happened in 1945. The eruptions then blocked the outlets. And of course, tragically then, because we didn't have systems like this in place, the railway bridge was taken out by the Lahar and 151 lives were lost. Everything just flowed right on down through here and then right up to the bridge. And if you look at the bridge itself, those round piles that you see, they are the original piles for the bridge before about two years ago when they decided to raise the whole bridge by two metres to take it out of harm's way of the Lahar. And I think it's a good thing they did that. One of the wonderful things about living in New Zealand is its dynamic and ever-changing landscape. However, living near the fiery and unpredictable Mount Ruapehu means we've got to be prepared. Behold my cool stuff while I keep the funk in my 